Hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching Furutech. Two days back we tested one of the most anticipated Android 13 based ROM called as the Rise Droid 7.5 for the OnePlus 9RT. We thoroughly tested that ROM and it is one of the best custom ROM available now but the flood of custom ROMs now started and yet another official custom ROM called as the Pixel OS by the developer Suga Kesha has been released. The name of custom ROM is much more similar to the Pixel experience and as per the name ROM in the real world is similar to the Pixel experience and it aimed to provide the experience similar to the Google Pixel phone with the numerous performance enhancement and a small amount of additional features. So today in this video we will see its flashing process if you are coming from the any other Android 13 based ROM and if you are coming from the Oxygenos 11, 12 or 13 then please follow the video given in the iCard as it is. We will also thoroughly test the ROM for the performance, its CPU throttling, features of the new ROM it sparks with my final verdict. So you can decide do you need to update or not. Download all the files given under the video description which includes the ROM zip file, boot image file, vendor boot image file, DTBO and the super empty file. Now with the further ado, let's get started. The new adventure. Once you download the files, place them in one folder in the PC on the desktop or inside the platform tools folder. Follow this procedure of flashing only if you are coming from any other Android 13 custom ROM. Now power up the device and long press the volume up plus down plus power button, phone will boot to the fast boot mode. Now connect it to the PC and head over to the folder where you place all the files. Now in that folder tap shift button on the keyboard plus right click of your mouse. From the drop down menu select the open command prompt here. In the CMD window type fastboot devices to check the device connected properly or not. Now first flash the boot image using the command fastboot flash boot and drag the boot image file in the CMD window and hit enter after flashing of file. Now type fastboot flash vendor underscore boot similarly drag the same named file and hit enter. Now flash DTBO by using the following command fastboot flash DTBO DTBO dot IMG. Now type fastboot reboot recovery. Now don't flash the last file called as the super underscore empty image. I will tell you later if you want to use it or not. Phone will boot to this recovery screen. In the recovery touch screen is working so tap on the apply update. Now tap on the adb side load. Now head over to the PC again and type adb side load. And drag the rom zip file and hit enter. You will see the flashing percentage in the CMD. You will see this flashing screen on your phone. You will get stuck at 47% but don't worry flashing is continued in the CMD. But if you guess the flashing failed with the error 7 in the CMD then only you need to flash the super underscore empty image by using the command fastboot wipe w super super underscore empty image and enter. Once again enter into the recovery and side load the zip once more as you shown previously. But here we didn't got any error if you guess the total 1x notification means flashing is completed. Now take the phone in your hand and go to the home screen of recovery there tap on the advanced then select reboot to the bootloader again in a cmd type fastboot w and hit enter wiping starts once done type fastboot reboot phone will start to boot and finally you boot it to the pixel animation everything will be same like the pixel experience rom while setup screen brightness will be dim but don't worry once the full setup has been done in the quick setting panel increase the brightness so everything has been done, now let's jump to the about phone. So this is the Android 13 build with the same material clock easter egg of Android 13. Security patch is of latest October 2022. Kernel is enforcing and its version is 5.4.197. Build date of ROM is 7th November 2022. Now let's check the performance of the new build. Like the Rise Droid, this build is super smooth as compared to the Oxygenos 13. This ROM has the same performance without any swipe gesture issues that we faced on the stock Oxygenos 13. Let's compare the results of this build using the Geekbench with the Oxygenos 13 and the Rizdroid. For the single core, I got the score of 1100. For the multi core, I got the score of 3353. Both these scores are way higher than the both the Oxygenos 13 and the Rizdroid. You can watch the videos of the both the ROMs from the iCard and check its performance using the timeline for the results. While on the GPU drives for the OpenGL we got the score of 4759 which is nearly same as the both the Oxygenos 13 and the Rizdroid. While on the Vulcan graphics score is the 4245 
which is same as the raised weight but the lower as compared to the oxonus 13. So overall in general for the performance department numerically pixel OS is the superior than the both the raised weight and the oxonus 13 but the visible difference is very negligible in the real world performance. Now let's test the CPU throttling results of the ROM and we will compare it with the oxonus 13 and the raised weight results. I ran the test for the 5 minutes under 20 threads with the CPU temperature visibility enabled. When I stopped the test after 5 minutes, I got the score of 92% with the temperature rising up to 55 degrees Celsius. If you compare these results with the Oxonus 13, it's lower. There we got the 96% of CPU throttling while on the rise drive we got the 89%. So all the score difference between the, all the builds is negligible. So all the ROMs has the better capability for handling the CPU intensive task by reducing the performance of the device using the CPU throttling. Now it's time to check all the basic things as usual because this is the initial build by the Pixel OS team. But here without the lengthening the video, I will quickly review it. Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi hotspot is working, but I did not got any setting of changing Wi-Fi bandwidth like the 2.5 and the 5 words. There is no Wi-Fi 6 option available like the stock Oxonus ROMs. VOLT incoming and the outgoing calls are working, but there is no call recording feature available in the ROM. 5G network compatibility is available if you are using the 5G networks. Wi-Fi calling is working. Bluetooth connectivity is working with the HD audio along with the SBC and the SSC codec support. Audio in the speaker and the ear speaker is working without the issue. Except these other features like the alert slider is working, NFC is working, GPS is also working, fingerprint working without any issue. If you wipe the data correctly, like as I have shown in the installation part of the video, then there will be no issue in the setup process of fingerprint like we seen in the RiseDroid. ROM has the normal camera application which didn't have most of the feature. So use the Google Gcam MGC build. It has all the working feature except the 4K 60fps recording. Except that all the things like the night sight, portrait mode for the front and the back camera, HDR mode for the camera, slow motion and time lapse, Video stabilization, panorama and the photosphere mode, ultra wide angle modes for the camera, all is working. OK Google Voice activation is working in the both the off screen and on screen mode. Unlimited photo backup for the Google Photos application is working. ROM as the data store is encrypted. All the sensors are working along with the mic, ear speaker, multi touch, and the display. Everything is working but there are the major issues that I will discuss in the bugs and the issue section of the video, so stay with us. If we discuss about the features in the ROM, this is the OSP build which didn't have much features but it comes with the Pixel goodies like the Pixel Launcher, Wallpapers and Style application which is fully working. In display we get the live display feature, it has working reading mode, color calibration and the picture adjustment both are working. Color mode setting available, it has the natural and the boosted and adaptive mode setting. ROM has the high and the peak refresh rate setting. By using this we can set the constant 120 or the 60 Hz. Double tap to wake and double tap to sleep both are working on the lock screen. Except this in the system setting, we get the all the gestures like the quick tap on the back of the device, swipe to screenshot, quickly open camera, system navigation advanced setting. One-handed mode, advanced reboot, playback control using the volume keys, all are available here and working very well. Instead of this, we get the Dolby Atmos inbuilt in the ROM, which is fully working for the speakers and the wired earphones or the Bluetooth earphones. It has the bunch of the equalizer setting to improve the sound quality. All the major customization features we discussed here. Now it's time to check what is not working or the bugs in the ROM. The main issue is the safety net check got failed. So you can't able to use the secured application like the banking or the UPI. They may give errors to you. You can bypass this issue using the root or the magix module. DRM info showing the wide one as the L3. So here again, you can't able to use the Netflix or the Amazon Prime at the full HD resolution. E1 device is not certified in the Google Play that causing the issue to download some application from the Play Store like the Netflix. Except these bugs, no other major issues I found here, all the basic things are working. Bugs of safety net and the play protect is the main issue, hope that will be get fixed in the next update. Battery life is not tested yet, I will compare both the rise rod and the pixel OS and will release battery results in the another video with the gaming and the performance test. 
Until then, if you like my video, then please do like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel. Press the bell icon for the notification of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching. Signing off. Take care. Bye bye.